Hello, I'm Chanoch Teller, and I was asked to speak about either Hakarat Tatov or the miracles of the sixth day, where we're going to try and combine both of them. Uh, I want to mention that today is Lagba Omer, the day that this is being filmed. And one of the stories of Lagba Omer is so important, connects so nicely, it just dovetails perfectly, and that is Rebbe Kiva. Rebbe Kiva was able to see how the water went through the brook and then made a hole within the rock, and he made from this a Kalva Chomer. He made a deduction. If water is able to penetrate a very stiff and rock and difficult rock, how much more so could Torah make an impression upon the heart? So I thought to myself, who knows how many hundreds of people, perhaps thousands, have noticed this rock before in the water and the hole within the rock and didn't make an impression upon them. But Rebbe Kiva, it was a game changer. You have to be an observant Jew. And here too, regarding all the miracles of the Six Day War, that we have our reunited and reliberated Yushalayim, we have to be able to see it, notice it, and appreciate it. There's a special blessing, Ur'ei B'tuv Yerushalayim, to see the good. I was a very young boy, I was not even literate yet, and there was an editorial in the New York Times which caught my eye. And I read it several times, it was hard for me, I was reading phonetically, A-C-H-A-R-E-I, and yet I read it again, A-C-H-A-R-E-I. And it sounded bizarre and strange and peculiar until I chopped. It was June 1967. It was an editorial about the Israeli Mfaktim, the Israeli commanders, and it read Acharai. Whereas every other army in the world, soldiers go to battle at the faceless command of the commander they don't even see. In the Israeli army, it's the Mfaket, the commander goes first and then beckons to his loyal troops to follow me. So there are those who don't see accurately, or they don't see it appropriately, or they don't see it, period, or they get the wrong deduction. I heard a story, I was told to me it happened during the Six-Day War, perhaps it was a different time, but I believe it's a true story, how an Egyptian helicopter filled with soldiers landed on a sand dune at a very obtuse angle. And the commander of the, of the helicopter got out and he said to the soldiers, do not leave until I return. And this is in the battle zone. So he got out and the rotator blades of the helicopter cut off his head. And the soldiers saw his head uh, skimp skipping in the sand and Israelis started approaching closer and closer, and in the end, they took the helicopter lock, stock, and barrel because the soldiers were waiting for their commander to return. They didn't see. Now, the one, the soldier who told me the story, he said, see how silly these Egyptians are? Uh, I saw a miracle, and he missed the point. Uh, there are those who are able to see properly, and not only able to see it, but able to take action. I want to relate to you the story of Simcha Holtzberg, Sikron Lebrocha. Simcha was, grew up as a boy in Varsha. He partook in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. In those days of the ghetto, in the squalor of the ghetto, one day he heard his parents whisper, there isn't enough food for tomorrow. Not enough food means, of course, they were subsisting on sub-starvation diet of scraps of food and uh, smelly sausage or, or, or sardine. And yet and yet, they had nothing left. When he heard this, he decided he's going to go out, outside the ghetto, and scavenge some food. Now the young children, the boys and the girls, they were called the smugglers. They went under the fence or over the wall with their agile bodies, they're able to somehow get through, and then they would take some money or some clothing and jewelry, and they would barter it for a scrap of potato, a piece of carrot. Simcha went out and did not come back that night. His parents were worried sick. He returned the next day and he didn't have a fruit nor a vegetable, but he had a piece of chocolate. His clever mother was able to melt it and make a drink and give everyone something sweet to drink within the bunker. After the war, Simcha survived. He came to Israel. He was outspoken in his protests against Israel taking reparations from Germany. He became a disciple of Ari Levin. Rabbi Ari Levin, aside from being the Mashkiach and Eitz Chaim, the great Sadik working together with Mrs. Zalman, he was known as the father of the, of the prisoners. He was those prisoners in the Machteret held by the British, and he would visit them on a regular basis. Simcha learned from him. During the Six-Day War, of course, all the miracles, but there were also hundreds that were wounded, that were maimed, and Simcha became their father. His title became the father of the wounded, Av Lepsuyim. And he was truly their father. Many of the soldiers called him Abba, and he would walk them down to the Chuppah. And he would always visit them and give them cheer. He said he wanted to live up to his name, to Simcha. And what do you think he always had in his pocket? He always had a piece of chocolate. And Simcha saw the lesson, and he was able to take the bitterness of what he survived as a boy and make it productive. He saw the good. I want to 
conclude by telling you that truthfully, if you don't see the good and the blessings and have the gratitude, and that's a poor reflection upon yourselves. Uh, there's a story that took place in Shalim Shamala, that epoch of uh, about 170 years ago, and the humble tinsmiths and cobblers were righteous, pious individuals, the women are very pious and saintly. And at that time, there was a fellow who got married in Nisan. I don't, know why I don't know why people do this. I don't know who's going to make them Sheva Brachot. But in any event, he was wed, and then uh, just a week later was the Seder. And he's new in the family, and he's sitting there, he's Yerushalmi, he's sitting there with his strimal and with his kittel. He doesn't do any talking because he allows his brother-in-laws to do all the talking. And when it comes to Shulchan Orech, his mother-in-law serves the soup. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> and every season getting apoplectic, and they're very upset their sister married such a weird individual. He's going, <laughs> <laughs> and we know what happened. He's saying, because <laughs> he sees bobbing in the soup are three kernels of, popped, of puffed wheat. And it's a terrible scene. You know the way the way we clean, and then you shall find they're cleaning. There's nothing to clean, they're cleaning, cleaning. And so the Seder turns somewhat sour. The mother takes the soup and tosses it out the window. The next day, early in the morning, everyone stays up all night long to tell and extol the miracles of going out of Mitzrayim. And everyone gathers in Bati Machsa for Vasikin, for davening at Kibatikin, at Netz. And the Rabbi Shlaim, the very clever Shmuel Salam, asks the Fanlo, Vigate us with the Naya Chasin. How's it going to the son in law? He gets a rather cool answer. So he goes with the Nusan and said, How's married life? And he says, uh, mm -hmm. He said, How was the Seder? He said, It was. He said, How was it? It was, now he's a very smart man. What happened? So he said, mm -hmm. I teach in seminary. I know when girls don't know the answer, they go, mm -hmm. what happened? He said, mm -hmm. what happened? So he related that when they served the soup, there was three kernels of puffed wheat in the soup. So right away, Shmoslan said, it was in your soup? He said, yes. And no one else's soup? He said, no. He said, get out of here. And he called the shamash. He said, bring me a shmata. They went outside. He said, hand me your strimal. He took the strimal. He went through it, and several kernels of wheat fell out. What did he deduce? That his urfuf was just one week before. And in those days, they didn't throw the urfuf pashkas and candy. They used to throw puffed wheat. So if it only came in his soup, that means it came from his strimal. And the moral of the story is, don't criticize someone else until you check your own strimal first. You want to see the good of Yushalayim, or Eva to Yushalayim, and the Hakarata Tov, and appreciate, be grateful and appreciative.